In 1967, a young researcher named Jocelyn Bell identified an unusual radio emission that you can kind of see right here that was very predictable, seemed to have a pattern that we've never seen before, and more importantly, was coming from the same location in outer space. The signal back then did not have a name, but almost right away, researchers started referring to it as LGM, Little Green Man, because this was, at that point, the best evidence we had for potential alien life. But it didn't take long for the scientists to figure out that it actually matched better with another theoretical prediction from astrophysics. These unusual signals, which were then detected elsewhere, were better explained by another concept known as the neutron star, with powerful enough magnetosphere to produce very powerful emissions in two directions. With this new concept eventually being referred to as a pulsar, or a pulsating neutron star, and this was essentially a discovery of a completely new object that would eventually redefine how we see astronomy. But also in the process teaches so much more about the universe that we never knew before. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and so today we're going to be talking about that big announcement of 2023. One of the biggest international collaborations in terms of scientific research that finally physically confirmed something we've been suspecting for a pretty long time. Our universe seems to be filled with a lot of different vibrations coming from the space-time itself, so-called gravitational wave background. In essence, background noise, where the space-time itself starts to oscillate, vibrate, move around, shift around, without pretty much anyone noticing anything, and only visible if you study distant objects with very precise observations such as the ones that pulsars allow us to do. And so in this video, let's go through some of these discoveries and what we know so far, and what future research will probably reveal. Now technically this video is part 2, and the previous video is in the description below, and goes through a lot of clarifications on previous research and previous data discovered in the last few years. But because I know most of you will probably not watch that video, and instead want the answer now, let me give you the basic summary. So in general, the gravitational wave research is a relatively new field. I mean, it existed for a pretty long time, since Einstein proposed it over a hundred years ago, but the actual proof of gravitational waves only came in 2015. And since 2015, various facilities have already uncovered approximately a hundred different gravitational wave events, with some being really intriguing and somewhat unusual. You can find some of them in the description below. But so far, all of these events involved either a neutron star or a black hole colliding, producing a very specific frequency usually a frequency in hundreds or thousands of hertz, technically something that should be audible to human ear, but because we're talking about gravitational waves, which basically oscillate the space-time itself and not any molecules or atoms, the only way you'll be able to hear this is actually if you were extremely close to the source of a collision. And so technically you could hear it, but you'd probably have a lot of other problems to deal with, such as being so close to a black hole. Anyway, more about this in one of the future videos that should be on the channel really soon. So make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more. But in terms of the gravitational wave spectrum, just like with other frequencies, it is a really large spectrum. You can obviously have things that are extremely high in frequency, such as for example coming from rotating neutron stars or supernova, or you can also have things that are extremely low in frequency. And here we're talking about objects that are much more massive, and possibly produce waves that are much higher in amplitude. So I guess one way of imagining all of these waves together is sort of imagining an ocean. We have all of these waves bouncing around, all sorts of waves interacting with one another, some waves larger than other waves, and some waves barely perceivable by anything. And so some of these larger waves, or waves that have a very long wavelength, would practically be undetectable from planet Earth because they would pass through Earth without anything ever noticing. And I think here one of the best analogies is, once again, ocean waves, but in this case, tsunami waves. Now today we actually have a really intriguing technique in detecting incoming tsunami waves before they can cause damage on land. Normally when a tsunami is in deep ocean, it's almost impossible to feel it or detect it unless you have specialized buoys with specific sensors. And here it's because the wavelength of these waves is extremely long. For a wave in a deep ocean, the wavelength can be in hundreds of kilometers and only have an altitude of approximately a few meters, maybe even lower. But by using surface buoys anchored to a certain location, it's possible to detect minute changes when tsunami wave passes through them. 
And so by having several of these buoys around the ocean, it then becomes more obvious that something is actually coming toward land, thus producing what's known as a tsunami warning. And these are usually almost 100% accurate. But if it wasn't for these buoys, across various locations in the ocean, it would be impossible to detect these waves. In a nutshell, that's sort of what the scientists did here as well. Except that the buoys in this case are very distant pulsars. Pulsars located hundreds or even thousands of light years away from one another and in different locations across the Milky Way. But pulsars whose pulsations have been measured for many years and whose pulsations are extremely precise. We're talking about atomic clock precise. I mean, it's actually been suggested that we use these pulsars to measure time instead of atomic clocks. That's how precise they are. But sometimes something happens and the actual pulsation gets a bit of a glitch. Now, this does happen inside neutron stars, very often because of some kind of a reshuffling, or essentially some kind of a, for the lack of better words, star quake. But what if this unusual glitch happens around several pulsars, and especially if those pulsars are hundreds or thousands of light years apart? Now, that becomes a little bit more intriguing. Why would several pulsars suddenly experience a similar glitch, even though they're so far apart from one another? The only reasonable explanation that makes sense is that it's actually the space-time itself that glitched. In other words, it's possible that some kind of a space-time tsunami passed through this region and glitched all of them at the same time. Now, this is what we would call a nanohertz gravitational wave or a gravitational wave whose amplitude is in hundreds or thousands of light years in length, which we believe can be produced by very, very massive objects, such as, for example, supermassive black holes or even interaction between galactic objects. But I guess more importantly, it's something that could be going on around us at all times, because some of these black holes are going to be orbiting around one another for a very, very long time. And as they orbit, they produce these waves. But there are many of them, so they actually produce a kind of a massive gravitational noise. A vibration with wavelengths in hundreds and thousands of light years that seems to be detectable only if you look at these distant buoys, pulsars. And well, that's precisely what the scientists just did. Actually, they didn't just do it. They've been doing these observations for the past 15 years, and this is their third official release, with this one being particularly exciting because it seems to suggest that there's definitely something out there, but something that we currently cannot explain. Now, I'm going to try to post all of the studies behind this in the description below, and there are quite a few studies, by the way, but so far, every one of them discovers the same thing. And to me personally, this is the best part of this research. This was several independent teams from different countries, from different facilities, and even using completely different pulsar data that all did pretty much the same research and found pretty much the same thing. They all discovered undeniable proof that there is a background gravitational noise that actually even seems to be a little bit louder than anyone expected. And it could not have come from pulsars themselves. It could not have come from, for example, errors in measurements. It really seems to be a result of something super, super massive creating large amounts of waves all across the universe, vibrating the entire galaxy and essentially creating this unusual background noise. Noise that makes everything sort of wobble and move around, but in a way that's not really perceivable to physical life. I mean, the only way we can actually see this is because we're observing these precise observations from individual pulsars, but without these pulsars, it would be impossible to see this otherwise. But because we're seeing these glitches coming from pulsars in a very specific way, it implies that something is definitely happening there. And in total, all of these teams together studied 115 different pulsars, but they actually chose different pulsars based on the observations and the data available. And to be more specific, the biggest team was from Nanograph, North American collaboration. We had the same results, but using different pulsars from EPTA, which stands for European Pulsar Timing Array. Same results, but different pulsars from the Australian Parks Pulsar Timing Array, PPTA that's actually been collecting data for over 20 years now. Same results, different pulsars from CPTA, Chinese Pulsar Timing Array, this one using the largest radio telescope we have on the planet, the Chinese Fast Telescope. Same story, same results from NPTA, Indian Pulsar Timing Array, and SAPTA, South African Pulsar Timing Array as well. And all in all, this is one of the biggest scientific collaborations since the results from the EHD or Event Horizon Telescope that became famous for releasing the first picture of a black hole. And so here, the results are very difficult to argue with. Different teams, different pulsars, exactly the same results. And the result being that there is a long wavelength gravitational wave 
producing some kind of a low pitch hum. Whether what exactly is producing this hum is a question that nobody can answer right now. It could be obviously black holes, with binary supermassive black holes being one of the best candidates, but it could also be a lot of other things as well. For example, one of the suggestions here is maybe this is from various cosmic strings, the result of a rapid change in the early universe that produced these unusual formations that created vibrations in the early universe still audible today. If so, this would be a direct result of the concept known as inflation or the sudden increase in size of the entire universe. Likewise, another proposition involves the idea of the Big Bounce, the precursor universe that might have collapsed on itself before starting a new Big Bang. So maybe here we're hearing remnants of the previous universe. Now that's a very big assumption and it's definitely going to require way more evidence, but it is currently one of the alternative explanations. Likewise, maybe this is something to do with pulsars themselves. Maybe we've discovered a completely new property of pulsars we've never known about before, and it's nothing to do with waves at all. It's the pulsars that are doing this unusual vibration. But still, the most likely and the most accepted explanation is in regards to supermassive black holes very likely orbiting around one another in centers of various galaxies across the universe. In this case, we're talking about thousands or maybe even millions of them, with many of them potentially on a collision course as well. But in this case, this does create a bit of a problem because physically, or in terms of observations, we haven't really discovered that many of these supermassive black hole binaries compared to what the scientists predict so far. There's even something called final parsec problem that you can learn more about in a video in the description that sort of suggests that it would be very difficult for supermassive black holes to collide, but more importantly so far, there's actually only a handful of potential candidates for galaxies with maybe binary supermassive black holes in the middle. And so the fact that they're not very common is one of the mysteries of modern universe. Nevertheless, the discovery from these pulsars that you can see right there across the Milky Way is almost definitely there. It's almost 5 sigma, and in physics 5 sigma is very very difficult to argue against. Okay, technically it's actually 4.6 sigma, so here the percentage is something like 99.349% correct. But because there are several teams doing the study and they all have the same result, it's actually very likely to be true. But I guess more surprisingly, the evidence here suggests that the waves themselves are also at least twice as loud as they were expected to be. So the universe is not just vibrating, it's also vibrating kind of loudly, producing these wavelengths thousands of light years in length, coming from some mysterious objects out there. But this is of course just the first discovery, with this research still going on actively for at least a few more years. Now we might have more confirmations within the next year or two, but the actual observations are going to be done for at least 4 more years, possibly longer. And following this, within the next couple of years, we might finally see some of the hotspots where these gravitational waves are coming from individually. At the moment it's all just noise to us, we don't really know what's happening, but eventually we'll hopefully see the source. And since the noise was discovered to be so loud, it has to be something really massive, more massive than anyone expected. And so naturally we're going to be coming back and talking more about this in some of the videos in the future. Either way though, once we have more information, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Oh, and of course, congratulations to all of the teams responsible for these incredible findings. Cannot wait to hear more about new discoveries. <laughs>